Today I get to do work I love as a designer and creative, working with my own clients on branding and with the world's largest agencies on high profile campaigns. But it took a while to get there. This year is 20 years since my first paid design project and 18 years since I started my first full time job as a graphic and web designer. I know what you're thinking. Did you start when you were five? No. I'm 40 years old, even older than my good friend Ran Segal, and in this video, I want to share six things I've learned along the way. The biggest insight from each phase of my career. Why? Because if you can learn from some of my mistakes, you might get where you want to be a little quicker. Let's see if we can get 20 years into five minutes. Number one, successful designers know more than software. I studied graphic design from the ages of 14 to 16 as my technology option in high school, but it was when I learned to hand code websites that I really became interested in web design. At first, I just wanted to make a website for the terrible indie band I was playing in. I thought more people needed to hear our music. They really, really didn't. Then when I got to university, I ended up building a blog that a family member who was a developer saw and then asked me to design a front end interface for a product he was building. And that was when I quickly realized I didn't know what I was doing. Knowing HTML and CSS and how to operate some basic software is not enough. Designers need to know the fundamental principles behind good design. That's why here at Flux we do more than software tutorials. We continue to emphasize the core design skills that you need to succeed. In fact, that's the title, core design skills of the new program we're working on. Mastering layout, type, color, imagery, having a solid process to follow is essential if you want to be a web designer. Number two, successful designers work at speed. In 2004, I started working full time as a graphic and web designer. And the following year, I landed my first job at an agency. The portfolio I had cobbled together was apparently adequate to land me the job, but my very first day I had a scary realization. I was so slow. I hadn't mastered the core design skills, so I was simply moving things around till they look right, and that wasn't gonna cut it in a busy studio. For, so from that first evening and then for several months, I spent all day after work in the evenings, practicing, learning, repeating software shortcuts, discovering new techniques, schooling myself in the principles, copying from the senior designer I was working with. It was intense, but I quite literally got myself up to speed. Number three, successful designers solve problems. After leaving the city and moving to a web design agency for a short while, I then went in house, taking on a more general leadership and creative role and if you want to achieve anything significant you have to be prepared to take responsibility the person who makes mistakes rarely makes anything else the essence of design is to solve problems that's what separates designers from visual artists a successful designer looks for problems embraces problems knowing the creative act can overcome Number four, successful designers sell big ideas. Whilst working in-house, I co-founded a music industry-based creative agency and grew my role from spare time to part-time to full-time. And what I discovered there became my touchstone for every project I take on. Successful designers create and sell big ideas. We went into competitive pitching scenarios for everything from advertising campaigns to live production. And in those presentations, we needed to leave potential clients with the most memorable and compelling concept. Our job is not to make pretty things, it's to communicate. So find that big idea that will illuminate your concept because that's what people will buy and what will ultimately make it work. Number five, successful designers don't rely on their process. I sold out of my agency to my business partner and went to run the graphics side of the studio for a notable creative director, a fashion designer, couture level fashion, high profile music artists, publications like Vogue and Hypebeast we were creating for. And this solidified my own design philosophy about conceptual work and restraint, clear reasoning. And the creative director not only had a brilliant imagination, but also a relentless commitment to quality. I thought all designers were detail oriented, but this was on another level. And there was something he always said to everyone in the studio, don't trust your process, check. How can mistakes creep in if I take care? Well, they do. So check everything, have someone else check it. Consistency of colors, point sizes, cleanliness of code, spelling, check. And finally, number six, successful designers don't let admin trip them up. I have a brilliant client that keeps coming back and one of the managers there said recently to their colleague, oh, Matt's great, he's super organized. Now I wish they'd said super creative or skilled, but you know what? Clients want someone who's easy to work with. When your design 
it's just a hobby. These things don't matter. But when you become a professional, you need to have the proper insurance, track your time, keep physical and cloud backups, financial records, your, keep your files organized, so organized that another designer could pick them up and understand them. It might not be exciting, but these are the kind of things that clients appreciate. And if they're not in place, can trip you up, sometimes very painfully. I hope this helps you get you to where you want to be <laughs> quicker than I did. And that's why Flux Academy exists to help you succeed as a designer. Hopefully these pointers that I never had can be things for look out for and practice and seek out as you progress in your career. Until next time, happy designing.